Hey guys, what's up? Thank you so much for tuning in today here at Elevate Church. We know that today's message is going to rock your world and elevate your life to the next level. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the message. So I'm going to tell you guys, I'm going to tell on myself, this is probably one of my favorite parts of this message, because you get to see all my junk, but you get to see God's grace. And so I'm going to lead you guys literally through conversations I've had with God that he's corrected me to hear his voice. Because the way that I've learned to hear his voice better is by him telling me, that's not my voice. <laughs> Literally like, dude, what are you doing? That's not what I said. That's not what it sounds like. That's not the situation. And I'm like, oh, are you serious? And every single time I was like, can I get it right just one time? Like just one time would be real nice. But I'd also like to tell you this. That everywhere that I am in my life today is a result of listening to God's voice or disobeying God's voice. It was only those two options. And all of you are where you're at today because you either listened or you didn't listen. But I want you to know that wherever you are, God is ready to pick you up. God is ready to take you where you need to be. And give yourself the grace to make mistakes. So here are some conversations <laughs> that uh, God and I have had. So I asked God one day, and you could actually put up my scripture. Go ahead and put up the scripture. Um, this is John 10 and 14, and then we're going to hit 27, and I'm going to tell you why I'm using this scripture for what I'm saying. So it says, I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep, and my sheep know me. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them, and they follow me. Thank you. So one of these days, I was, I was trying to hear God, and I was just like, God, you know, I don't get it. I just, I'm perplexed. This is crazy. Like, sometimes I hear you. Sometimes I don't hear you, and sometimes I hear what I think is you, and then what, what the heck's going on, God? I'm like, am I your sheep or not? Like, I'm trying to figure this out. You say my sheep listen to my voice. I'm like, I'm trying to listen. I'm, I'm getting confused. What is going on? And so he asked me a simple question because, you know, he talks in questions. If you read the Bible, <laughs> you'll see Jesus ask a lot of questions. I'm like, dude, I needed an answer, but the answer is usually in the question. So he asked me, he said, have you heard my voice before? I said, yes. He said, then you either do or you don't. There's no in between. If you do, then you're my sheep. So for those of you who have heard God's voice before, and it might be a dry season, you're like, dude, but the dry season's been for years. Well, that's because you need to press a little harder. You need to seek a little longer. You need to be still and be quiet a little bit. But if, if you're in this area where it hasn't been super long, but it still felt dry. I want you to know that if you've heard God's voice before, it's either a yes or a no. There's no in between. Because God doesn't pick a son or a daughter and then it's like, oh, you're not the next day. Sorry. Like, I pick, he picked you as his sheep. You didn't pick him as shepherd. He picked you first. So the fact that he's talking to you and he's talked to you before, God's not going to be like, today you were a sheep, tomorrow you're a cow. Like, you're straight up sheep. So accept the fact that, God, I'm a son and a daughter. I might be struggling in this area, but thank you that I'm your sheep. And thank you because you're going to make a way for me to hear you better. Here's another correction. <clears throat> I have a few. Another day I asked God, what have I done? Why are you not speaking to me? Like drama. And then he answered me and said, you're actually asking the wrong question. I'm like, what? Like, what? What do you mean I'm asking the wrong question? He said, you need to be asking me, how are you speaking to me today? Because you see, in your walk with God, there's going to be a point where you mature, and God's going to start changing some things up. He doesn't change, but he's going to start changing you in maturity so that you can listen, that you can hear, that you could catch his voice in so many different ways. Because the enemy comes in so many different ways. But God is the creative one. And he could speak to you in ways that you wouldn't even imagine until you really walk with him. Until you have real relationship, you'll be like, what? You talk through the TV? Like, are you, I don't even know you watch TV. Like, what? I literally will watch movies sometimes and be like, God, watch with me. And I'll just invite God to watch. And obviously it's appropriate. So don't be watching some crazy movie and be like, yeah, God, talk to me. Yeah. God's not going to do that. Um. But he'll literally watch with me and minister to me through a scene. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. Like, wow, God, I, that blows my mind. Here's another correction. 
Another day, I thought that I heard God say something about something completely insignificant, and I missed it. And I was so frustrated with myself that even when God came to comfort me, I'm like, no. Like, don't, I don't want to be comforted right now. I just want to weep and be by myself, God. And God's like, all right, cool. And then after about a moment, I'm like, God, please comfort me. And then, and then God, God said this. He said, are you expecting yourself to hear me? Or are you expecting me to make myself heard? And are your expectations of yourself higher than my expectations of you? A lot of the times, guys, why we get discouraged, why we get frustrated, why we feel like, dang, man, I keep failing, I keep missing it, is because you've exalted your expectation above the Lord's. And that's an, that's an idol that people don't know about. How can your expectations of you be higher than the one who made you? So I'm sharing my weakness to make you strong. I'm sharing my weakness because I want to see the body not lied to anymore. If you guys could just get a hold of truth, nothing can possess your mind except the truth of God. And that's where the battle's at. It's not in your heart because most of us in here, we love Jesus genuinely. We're pursuing him every day, but the battle comes into our mind when we start overthinking, when we start buying the lies of the enemy, when we start buying our past failures. You know, guys, every day is a new day. So you get a, you get a chance to hear God afresh every day. Like, that's amazing. Here's, a, here's an interesting one. <clears throat> Another time, I got it wrong again, and I was perplexed. And I was like, okay. I was like, what do I do now? And then the Lord told me, when someone calls you from a distance and you don't, you don't hear them correctly, it's like, what do you do? I'm like, oh, snap, he's asking me a question. He's like, what do you do? I'm like, uh, I, I recommunicate. He's like, exactly. He's like, if you don't hear me correctly or you're a little confused, recommunicate. It's that simple. A lot of us go and we're like, God, I suck. I hate my life. Like, everything is falling apart. God's like, no, you just, you heard wrong. Just let me tune your ear. It's okay. Let me tune. And the problem is the reason why we do that, we revert to condemnation, is because we've been conditioned by a voice of condemnation. And we haven't been conditioned by our father's voice. If you're conditioned by your father's voice, there's this relationship there that you know, dad, I messed up. He's like, okay, get up, let's go. He's not going to leave you. Guys, when we, when we hear God, we, we have to hear him as sons and daughters, not orphans. Orphans don't know their father, but sons and daughters do. And that's why his voice is so important. There was another time where God spoke, I missed it again. And I was like, frustrated and I'm like God I'm, I'm trying to hear so hard that I started manufacturing a voice in my own head and it labeled itself God and some of us try to hear we like God say something God's not going to say something sometimes he just wants you to be still sometimes he just wants you to shh, just be with me if you've ever been in a relationship sometimes you just sit with the person you don't say anything, but there's so much communication going on. And what's so profound to me about that is he was giving me an example. He's like, if two people live in the same house, a kid is in one room and the father's in the other room, and the kid can't hear his father, does he feel like he abandoned him? I was like, no. He said, so why do you always feel like I'm abandoning you? Stop operating as an orphan and start resting in sonship and daughtership. Rest. Come on, guys, rest. I want to tell you this too. God's voice is encouraging, but it's also correcting and it's also confronting, but it's always done in love. It's never condemning. If you start hearing a condemning voice, that's not God. And years ago, pastor told me this and it stuck with me. When you feel like you can't hear God, rest in the fact that he can still hear you. Like God didn't go deaf because you did. I want you to know that. I'm going to say this real quick because my time is up, but there's a few different ways that God speaks. And I want to say this to open up your mind, but God definitely still speaks by his spirit. The main one's by his word. If you're not in his word, you probably won't know what his voice sounds like. I'm telling you this, his word is like the training wheels for the specific. It gives you the general and what Jesus sounds like. If you're not in the word, you cannot understand the father's voice. You need to because the Father will point you to the Word and the Word will point you to the Father. So make sure you're in there. 
Um, God can speak through dreams. He can speak through miracles, signs, wonders, the TV, music, wise counsel, nature, so many other ways, even through a message or a sermon. He can speak through prophecy. So don't limit God. Don't beat yourself up. Thank you guys so much. Proud of you, man. Give Benny a bigger hand clap. That's why we put him in youth ministry because he made so many mistakes. We're like, go tell the youth what not to do. No. No, I've known Benny. Benny's been in our church here now, gosh, almost eight years. And, uh, and to see his girl. How old were you when you got here, Benny? 17 years old. And uh, he's one of our phenomenal youth leaders and, and uh, speaks into the lives of our youth. And, but to see him just develop and mature in his, in his godliness and his amazingness has been just so awesome. I love seeing people in their gift. Um, I want you to write this down, and then I'm going to close it with this thought. Stillness. Everybody say stillness. stillness. God said, be still and know that what? I am God. So check this out. Stillness is preceded by revelation. In other words, we want to be still to get revelation, but God wants you to be still to know him. We want answers. God says, is that all you want me for? Be still and what? Know that I am. The purpose of being still is to know God more. It's not to get a revelation only. The revelation comes after we learn how to be still. Okay? All right, so just stay with that, and then we'll finish the service with a verse, and then you'll understand what I mean. Um, let me do a quick exercise with you. And I want you to listen to the instruction. Look at your neighbor and say, pay attention. Here's the instruction. It's going to be fun. Who here wants some cash tonight? Anybody want some cash? Okay. All right, good deal. Good, good. Then listen carefully. Listen to the instructions. Okay, so um, there, is, there is some cash in this room. And, um, and it's, it's in an envelope, and, um, and it could be anywhere in this room, but I'll explain it to you. So here's the deal. The only way that you can keep the cash that you're going to find is if after you find it, you, number one, you're going to shout, I found it. And then, number two, you're going to shout again, thank you, Jesus. If you do those two things, the cash is yours. Pretty easy exercise, right? question is where's the money <laughs> right it's in your pocket no I'm just kidding it's not there <laughs> okay so what I did what I did is this is I have placed um, some cash in three envelopes and when I count to three you'll all stand up and then I'm going to give you like 10 seconds to look under your chair because that's where there's a lucky winner here in this house tonight. Some of you are already going there. I already told you, but watch it. You, you, ready? One, two, three, stand up. All right, look, look, some people are already like. <laughs> Calm down. Look at your neighbor like relax. <laughs> okay. When I count to three again, then you can go ahead and see if it's under your chair. Ready? One, two, three, go! Okay. There's three of them. They did it already. They were just, they were just very soft. Don't open it yet. People are already like, there's one more. There's three, right? Yes? Huh? There's three. So there's one missing envelope. Anybody have it? Huh? Well, I guess there'll be one missing envelope. Did everyone look good under their chair? There's a point to this. Don't worry. Relax. Nobody know? Okay, well, then I guess we keep the cash. Praise God. Okay. Do we know what chair it's in? Just go to the chair. Maybe the person needs extra help. Praise the Lord. Found it. 
Ooh, finally. <laughs> Do you feel like Adam and Eve right now? <laughs> Was it her fault? <laughs> so, so listen, listen. So yeah, so there, so 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 there's cash in there, right? There, there's a reason I did this. Real quick, it's it's nothing like, ooh, but I do want to say something. God is always speaking, and He always wants to give instruction. That's our issue. We don't know how to be still. We 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 rather have the reply than actually listen to God. And what happens is when we just want a reply, you'll never know the the secret or the strategy or. Or, or, or how God wants to, you know, give you your healing, your, your, your breakthrough, your deliverance, whatever it is. Because we're so anxious to get the promise, but we don't want to listen to the process of what God has for us. I'm bringing a verse, and then I have some points. And I want you to listen carefully tonight because I really believe that uh, what Benny shared and then what I'm going to close with is going to open our horizon just a little bit more. Look at this. Go to Proverbs chapter 2, verse 1 on the screens. Or if you have your Bibles with you, please. Uh, your iPads, Androids, iPhones. Look at this. My son, this connects to what we just did. This connects to what we just did. Look how it applies, okay? Because Benny's right. You can learn from, from dreams. You can learn. God will speak from dreams, music, uh, movies sometime. Have you ever been watching a great movie, like a legit, wonderful, true story of a movie, and, and it just starts speaking to your heart? God speaks in many various ways. Someone's message, obviously, definitely the word of God. If you want to get a word from heaven, open your Bible. It says, my son, if, every say if. Man, that's the big, that's right. You, you should highlight, circle it, underline it, whatever you have to do. If, there's always an if with God. God doesn't do things. God always has an if whenever he wants to give you an answer, okay? Like he'll forgive you if you repent. He will heal you if you'll believe him. Okay, so he says, my son, if you accept my words and store up my commands within you, turning your what? Turning your what? Ears. That's the problem we have, right? Turning our ears. As we were doing that little fun exercise, people that I saw, I won't point you out, you were already ahead of the things I was even saying. And, and why? Because you weren't putting your ear to hear the instruction. Okay? So he says, uh, turning your ear to wisdom and applying your heart to understanding. Indeed, if you call out for insight and you cry aloud for understanding, and if you look for it as for silver, as for what? The moment I said cash, everybody was in. <laughs> it's true. Well, God's saying, if you, were, if you were just to look for God, to hear God as if you were looking for silver, as if you were looking for something of worth, sometimes I don't think we put enough value on the fact that God does speak. And then we wonder, why doesn't he speak to me? Because we don't listen or we don't put our ears to hear and we don't search for it like we did the the, the little cash that we gave out, right? Okay, so he says, call out for insight and cry aloud for understanding. And if you look for it as for silver and search for it as for hidden treasure, then, everybody say then. <clears throat> then you'll understand the fear of the Lord. Then you'll what? Understand the fear of the Lord. And we know that we, on Sunday I started the message with, and, and, and the, the, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of what? knowledge so we have to have some some respect number one we have to have some reverence and fear to want to hear from heaven but if you don't treasure hearing him if you don't search for it like silver then you can't expect to even think that God's going to speak to you God wants to be treasured as much as he treasures you okay and so it says this <clears throat> And you search for it as treasure, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. Notice, he says, be still and what? Know that I am what? God. God is more concerned about you knowing him than he is about giving you a response. Because once you know him, you'll know what to do. When you don't know him, you kind of stop knowing what to do. Let's keep going. And so it says, and uh, for, the, for the Lord gives wisdom and from his mouth comes what where does it come from so 
if it comes from his mouth, then that means that it has to get into my ear. So he's speaking. It's not that he, it's like Benny said, God wants to speak to us. God is speaking. God did not stop speaking. Maybe you stop hearing, but God has not stopped speaking, right? And so he says, and so his mouth comes knowledge and comes understanding. So out of these verses, let me just give you the, the seven ways in developing a hearing ear. Very simple, and I'm going to keep going. Number one, he says, accept my word. Let me say, accept my word. So many of us struggle with accepting well, his word. We'll accept a part of his word, but we don't always accept the whole counsel of his word. We'll pick and choose what we want to accept. Like when God says forgive, some of us don't like that. Why should we forgive? They should be asking for an apology for me. It, it, it doesn't work that way. He says accept my word. Accept my word. Number two, real quickly because I'm going to move on. Uh, he said store up my word inside of you. Store up my word. How are you going to know the voice of God if you don't know the word of God? You won't know how to differentiate what's God and what's you. Like Benny said, there was times just like where God had to correct him. No, dude, that's you. I didn't tell you that. That's why God says, put the word inside of you. Because when you, when you put the word inside of you, you become like the woman at the well where, where, where she was thirsty, right? And, 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 and she kept going to the well. And Jesus says, hey, give me, give me some water from the well. And she's like, man, I ain't giving you no. You're, you're a... You're an, an Israelite, you, you know, what, what do we have to do with you? And, and so he said, girl, if you only knew who was asking you for water, I'd give you living water. So you got to get water inside. You know why? Because that's where God's going to draw from, from the inside of you. Okay, number three, turn your ear. Everybody say, turn your ear. Man, we got to learn how to do this. Listen. Very simple, right? But very apply. I mean, these are all out of the scripture, okay? Number four, apply your heart to understand. So there's, there's a thing of listening. Like when you guys come to church on Sunday or Wednesday, you're hearing us, right? You're hearing. You're turning your ear to hear. Hopefully, I've said this before too, just because you have ears in this church doesn't mean you're even hearing me. Okay, but you have ears. Now the next thing is, now how do I apply my heart to understand what the pastor's saying? Or whoever's speaking, Benny, whoever. We have, to, we have to apply our heart. How do I apply my heart? I have to apply the word of God. I can't just expect God to do these awesome, amazing promises, but you haven't applied not one thing from the word. Start learning how to apply the simplest little things. And you watch, in God, you watch God and how he'll, he'll respond and he'll give you awesome answers. Uh, number five, call out. Everybody say call out. call out. Or ask for insight. Call out. Ask God for some insight. God, when was the last time you asked God about a decision you're making or that you've made and you can honestly say, you know what? God actually gave me the answer whether or not I should take job, that, that job. Many times we think that just because it's a good thing that it's a God thing. And not all good things are God things. you got to find out what's God and find out what's good. Because you can, yeah, you can go and take that good job, but maybe God had something better. But because your expectation was here, you went for this. Why? Pressure. Pressure will make you do some really goofy things. It really will. Uh, number six, uh, look for it like silver. You have to have a desire to look for God's voice. You have to look, whether it's in the word, which is, like I said, I think the number one place you should be hearing from heaven. Whether it's on a Sunday when you come here. Listen, on Sunday we had 40 salvations. 40 salvations. People came here to hear what God had to say. And then they, they, they met God. What, what happened? They were looking. They were valuing what they were hearing. They were hearing hope. They were hearing freedom. They were hearing, man, God is real. And, and what happens? Man, they saw fruit in that. Uh, number seven, the last one. Uh, then, every say Then. <laughs> When you do all these six, number seven, then you will understand the fear of knowing him. So, so, so instead of being caught up on whether or not I hear God's voice, we should be caught up on do I know him? Do I know God? I, 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 here, here's what the Bible said. It, 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 when you read the story of, of, of Moses and the Israelites, it says Moses knew God. But the Israelites only knew God's actions. So some of us, we just know about what God does. We heard, man, he does great things. But not many of us know God. 
God wants us to know Him. When you, when you, when you develop the knowing Him, then you're going to know His voice. Like, what was the verse you gave uh, my people know? John 10, 7. Yeah, John 10, 7, right? He says, I am the good shepherd, and my people know my voice, right? Um, when my kids have been little and we'd be at the supermarket, and, of course, I'm always overprotective, so if I even heard even a squeak out of my son, I would run to the next aisle over. When I would hear, I could, there could be 10 kids in the, in, in the shopping mall or in the, in the grocery store. If I heard Alexa say, Dad, or Isaac say, Dad, I knew, I knew their voice. Man, I'll run to that out like, like a crazy man, like someone's killing them or something. And all they're asking me, we're like, Dad, I want this box of cereal. You know, it was just wild. <laughs> Do you know that God knows your voice? God's not in heaven wondering, I wonder which voice is speaking to me today. <laughs> I, he knows. He, listen, God knows the depths of you. He says, I even know how many hairs are on your head, and I have them all numbered. Like today, some of you ladies, you combed your hair, you lost some hair. God went ahead and adjusted <laughs> Yeah, adjusted the count. He knows. He knows. Listen, that's why in verse 6 he says, For the Lord gives wisdom, and from his mouth come knowledge and understanding. If we are only willing to listen, I wonder how much better our life would be, or how much further we'd be along, or how much more we could probably have if we just put a little bit more effort in being still. Because stillness precedes revelation. We, we want more revelation. God says, no, I want you to know me more. Because once you know him, you know him. You know what he wants for you. You know what he wants to do with you. You know what he wants you to have. You know what he, what he doesn't want you to have. Uh, you know where he doesn't want you to go. You know where he wants you to stay, where he wants you to be. Uh, you'll know him. You'll know him. And once you learn the voice of God, you know what happens? Now you can start doing away with regret. Have you ever had that gut feeling? We call it gut feeling, right? Many of us are like, dang, that gut, like I should have, I, sh I, sh I should have bought that lottery ticket, you know, for some of you. Praise Jesus. Uh, <laughs> or I knew I should have, I should have got off that exit. Man, I knew it. Now I'm stuck in this like one hour traffic. That's me everywhere. I get always the traffic. Like, I'm like, I knew I shouldn't have got off here. And you start regret it, but you realize that in your gut, you already knew kind of inside, like, man, I shouldn't get off here. I should just get off at the next exit. But you went ahead and you canceled the, 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 what you called the nudge or, or the gut feeling. No, that was the Holy Spirit probably just warning you, just telling you, hey, just go to the next one. Do you know the Holy Spirit cares about every little thing about us? He doesn't want us stressed. He doesn't want us worried. But because we don't learn to trust the voice of God, because we don't learn to trust the, the listening, right, of God, many times we end up being in regret. Well, when you learn the voice of God, you'll have less regret, right? You'll have less regret. You'll also have, you'll have uh, less unnecessary heartache. I really believe that, that, that he'll keep us from unnecessary chaos. He'll keep us from unnecessary connections and relationships with people we shouldn't be linking up or hooking up with, right? Just because someone is sweet and wonderful doesn't necessarily mean that's a God thing. Oh, but they're just so kind. They go to my church. I don't care. Yeah. They're in my Bible study. Praise God. Listen, not every connection is divine. We, we need to, God, is this, is this, yeah, I get it. Love everybody, right? Love everybody. But we're talking about when you know the voice of God, you won't waste time anymore. When you know the voice of God, you won't waste resources anymore. You won't waste it anymore. For some of you that are, that are, that are into, like right now, I know that uh, we've been talking about stocks and all that. When we know the voice of God, we won't pick the, the wrong stocks. We'll pick the heavenly stocks. We'll get the right investments, amen. We'll buy the right houses, right. We'll we'll buy at the right time. We'll sell at the right time. When you know the voice of God, God will tell you, no, don't go to that company. Go to that company. When you know the voice of God, you do away with a lot of regret. You do away with a lot of unnecessary heartache. You do away with a lot of unnecessary chaos, unnecessary stuff. But we got to develop this this ear to hear. To listen to God. Amen? 
We stop wasting unnecessary time. I mean, who here wants some more time? Man, I tell you, we, we, we people in America, we are the biggest time wasters. Yeah, we just waste time. And, and, and listen, time is, is more precious than silver and gold. You can't get time back. Money, you can make back. Time, you can't. Once that time is gone, it's gone. Oh, but the Lord's the Redeemer. Okay, praise God. Yeah, he's the Redeemer, but you still lost that time, praise God. Yeah? You ain't going to be 40 again. Not going to be 30 again. Not going to be 22 again. So let's not waste time. Let's develop an ear to hear the voice of heaven. Amen? Okay, let me give you, uh, these are very big. When Jesus says, my sheep know my voice, and the voice of a stranger they don't know, what does that mean? My sheep know my voice, but the voice of the stranger they will not listen to. So that means that you and I, we're always listening, like it or not. We might as well put our antennas and our reception focused on him because there's other voices. Now, there are three voices. Everybody say three voices. There are three voices that speak to our hearts, which Benny talked about our heart, right? Three voices. Number one, write this down. The first voice that speaks to our heart is the secular voice. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to say it, the world. The secular voice is the conversation that has the lack of God. The world will tell you, you don't need God. It, as a matter of fact, it's the lawyer of sin. This, it's the, it, it finds the loopholes to God's word of righteousness and love. And so the secular voice starts being the attorney for you. Like, well, you know, it's okay. You can go ahead and just, just three more beers. You'll be good. You ain't going to get high. Come on, your, your tolerance is so much stronger than that. You got this. That's the lawyer of sin. That's the secular voice. Okay? So there's the secular. The second one, number two, is the satanic voice. The satanic voice is the one that will always contradict God's word. It doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't line up. It, it's always contradicting. It's always uh, bringing confusion, right? There is no, God says, I'm not a God of confusion. So when you're confused, that's a satanic voice that starts speaking, like Benny said, the lies, and, and he will contradict everything everything that God wants to do for you, the devil says, no, he doesn't. No, he doesn't love you. He doesn't care about you. You're not worth it. You're not worthy. Uh, you'll never come out of this. You'll stay there. That's satanic voice. That's the voice that's coming to steal, kill, and destroy. John 10, 10, right? So we have to be careful with the satanic voice because that voice is real, okay? It always contradicts anything that has to do with God's word. It's better, like for even, even just your healing. You know, when you start thinking, when you start doubting your healing, that's the devil telling you, He'll, he won't heal you. When you don't want to give and be generous, that's the enemy saying, don't give. You know, they want your money. Do you think that's God? Do you think God is, is concerned about anybody stealing your money? He's not. He, God says this, I own a cattle on a thousand hills and they belong to me. What's up? That's what he said. Do you know, the, do you know that's what the word says? Well, that's the problem. Um, Did I say that out loud? <laughs> Sorry. Number three. Number three. I wasn't being mean. That just came out. Okay. <laughs> Number th the third voice that speaks to our heart is the spirit. Okay. Now, the Holy Spirit is the one who aligns himself with God's word. Notice I didn't say the Holy Spirit gives you a word. No. The Holy Spirit only speaks what God tells him to speak to you. The Holy Spirit is submitted to God's word. The Holy Spirit is aligned with God's word. He's not only aligned with God's word, he's aligned with God's nature. The secular, the secular voice contradicts the nature of God. The satanic voice will contradict the word of God. The Holy Spirit will come in perfect alignment with the truth. That's why the Bible says, and the Holy Spirit will lead you into all truth. And so we have to really understand that these are the voices that speak to our hearts. There's the secular voice. There's the satanic voice. 
And then there's the voice of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit who wants to speak to us. Are you guys getting this? Okay, so the question is not, it's not about hearing God. Rather, it's about knowing his voice. Let me end it with this verse here. Look at this. 1 Samuel chapter 3. Because how does this happen? How is this possible? It's, it's been available since the beginning. Look at this. 1 Samuel 3 verses 1 through 10. We'll read this together. Look. This is the boy Samuel. Look at it. Everybody say the boy. boy. Look. God speaks to even children. And teach your kids already. Don't wait till they're old and they don't, they don't believe in hearing God's voice. If you got little ones, tell them, you know, what's God telling you right now? He told me to buy me ice cream. Okay, awesome. That's so great. Okay. You know what that does? That's called a faith muscle. But you're also giving them, giving them direction. My, my kids, they've, they've learned how to hear the voice of God. But that's taken training. We got to train our children in the ways they should go, right? So as they grow old, they won't depart from his voice. So look, it says the boy Samuel uh, served the Lord under the direction of Eli. And in those days, the Lord didn't give many messages to those people. You know why he didn't give many messages? Because there was no Holy Spirit like we have it. They had, they, had, they had temporary Holy Spirit. God only gave the Holy Spirit to specific people like King David, Samuel. Uh, he gave it to different prophets only to accomplish an assignment and a calling. He gave them for a season. Then the Holy Spirit wouldn't be there. Then Jesus came and Jesus says, I baptize you with the Holy Spirit so that you can be my witness. We don't have temporary Holy Spirit. You and I, man, we have eternal Holy Spirit. And he seals us. But look, he says, and in those days the Lord didn't give many messages to his people. He didn't give them many visions. One night Eli was lying down in his usual place. Ever say his usual place. Find a quiet place that's usual where you and God can meet. Find a spot. Maybe it's your chair, your, your, your favorite chair. Maybe it's sitting in your backyard. Uh, maybe, maybe it's sitting in your front yard. Uh, I don't know. But find, maybe it's sitting on your bed. But find that place where you and God can meet. Look. So he was lying down in the usual place. And his eyes were becoming so weak that he couldn't see very well. So obviously he was sleepy. And Samuel was lying down in the Lord's house. That's where the ark of God was kept. And the lamp of God was still burning. And the Lord called to Samuel, Samuel. Samuel answered, here I am. He ran over to Eli, right, prophet. And he said, here I am. You called out to me, didn't you? But Eli said, I didn't call you. Go back to lie down. Go back to bed. And again, the Lord called out, Samuel. Samuel got up and he went to Eli. He said, here I am. What you want? You called out to me, didn't you? My son, Eli, said, I didn't call you. Go back to bed. And Samuel didn't know the Lord yet. Some of you don't know the voice of the Lord yet. But guess what? You're about to know his voice. Didn't know his, you know why he didn't know the voice yet? Because he didn't know him yet. And so maybe you've been walking with God for years and you've never have known the voice of God because you just, for whatever reason, you just didn't give God a permission. You didn't give him a chance and... And so he says, go back and lie down. And Samuel didn't know the Lord yet. That's because the Lord still hadn't given him a message. It's not that God hasn't spoke to you. It's just that he hadn't given you a message yet. But I believe God's going to give messages now. And the Lord called out to Samuel for the third time. And Samuel got up and he went to Eli. He said, man, I've already, I know you've been calling out my name. That's the Mauricio version. Here I am. You called out to me. Then Eli realized that the Lord was calling the boy. So Eli told Samuel, hey, listen, go and lie down. If someone calls out to you again, say, speak, Lord. Say it with me. Speak, Lord. I'm. Say it again. Speak, Lord. I'm. We do a lot of talking. We don't do a lot of listening. We do a lot of praying. That's called talking. But we don't wait and listen. You want a response, but you won't listen. Speak, Lord. I'm listening. 
So Samuel went and he laid down in his place and the Lord came and he stood there and he called out. And just as he had done the other times, he said, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel replied, speak, I'm listening. And I really believe that, that God wants to speak to us. But in all honesty, we have to come back to the reality that we do live in a very entertaining world even in church sometimes you know I get it we like we like to deliver in various ways I, I don't try to be funny I, I'm just this is who I am but I'm not here to entertain you um, but I am here to deliver a word but sometimes without even knowing you rather have entertainment than to hear the voice of heaven and and that's not healthy for us and not only does God not want us to be solely entertained, but, but God also wants us to not be so driven by technology that we're just so consumed. Our ears are just watching TV, watching movies, entertained, and we're on and technology, which we enjoy technology. It's, it's a great tool to, to preach the gospel and connect with family. But how, how are we going to say Speak, Lord, I'm listening. If we're so consumed with all the noises around us, it's not going to be possible. So it's, let's come back to the simplicity of be still and know that I am God. Let's know him a little bit more because that, my friend, the fear of the Lord, is the beginning of knowing him. And, and you know what? When someone speaks... It shows respect when you actually listen. Don't you hate it when you're talking to someone and they're doing something else? You're like, girl, what you doing? I'm talking to you. Right? Yeah, I, I'm trying to have a conversation. You feel like you're what? Disrespected. You feel dishonored. That is how we treat God. Can we just be honest with ourselves? We don't listen very much. We talk a lot. And it's hard to be still. If today's message impacted you in any way and you want to help us spread the gospel with a financial gift, text the number below. And we know that someone's life will be changed the same way that yours was today.